Hey, hey, good morning. It is good to see you again for Encouraging Talks. Thank you so much for coming in. Today we are on day two of a new week, new topic. This week we're talking about Bible verses that will help us overcome adversity. All right. Hey, Mr. Terry, thanks so much for coming in for the broadcast there. Good morning, Steve. Thank God for giving me one more day. I know that's right. Thank you so much for being here. Going in the doors are open, doesn't cost a dime. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Ken, good morning. Thanks so much for coming in. I'm just glad to be used, you know. I'm glad to be woken up again, woken up on time and able to come and have a great conversation. So I hope you'll be encouraged. Wait just a couple seconds before I jump in too deep. Hey, Frugal Mama, good morning. Adversity, adversity. The simple definition is a difficulty, a hardship in life. And I used to think, you know, a long time ago as a Christian, I used to think that I was exempt from hardships. I used to think that, you know, why is, are bad things happening? Why am I feeling this way? Well, because we have to go through things to build us up, to make us stronger. So, you know, we're not exempt just because we're Christians, just because we follow God doesn't mean, oops, sorry, I dropped something. All right. Doesn't mean that we are, are exempt from difficulties in life. If anything, we have trust in God. And that's what we talked about yesterday, right? Trusting in God um, and knowing that he is on the other side of that. And we don't have any reason to worry, any reason to uh, fear. So no matter what we're going through, no matter what somebody has done to us, if we fall down, we know that we can get back up through Christ. And that's a great uh, adversity overcomer right there in the Bible. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. We talked about that yesterday. We also talked about Proverbs 3, chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. Just trusting in God because we don't know, you know what our life is supposed to be like. We don't know or we don't have the power that God has for our life. We don't know why, and we don't have the ability to look forward. So why not just trust him with our life, knowing that we're precious to him, knowing that he's not going to, um, you know, he's not going to leave us or forsake us, no what before and against us to prosper. He's going to go before us in those battles that, you know, in our mind or in person battles, all those things. So just giving glory and honor to God is whew, the number one way to overcome adversity. I just thank God for bringing me to this topic. And, you know, I'm only I'm only um, being used. So I'm just happy to be used. Right. We're all going to suffer adversities on this earth. That's what is going to happen, right? But we know that uh, following Christ, that we don't have to die twice. We can just die once and then we can go on to live uh, peacefully, eternally, forever. So. There is no suffering, right? There are no adversities, all those good things that we think about. So that's what we strive to do, right? So today, as you can see by the title, we're going to hop into 1 Peter. Let me type it in. 1 Peter 5, chapter 5, verse 10. All right. So that encouragement reads, in his in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Thank you, Jesus. This word is already blessed. Look, that right there is just like, if we believe that God's word is true, we believe that God is true, then why wouldn't we feel um like we can overcome anything with just this verse right here. After you suffered a little while, just a little while, he said, it's not going to last always. Then he will restore you. So when we endure, it makes us stronger, right? We have been restored. We've been able to, 
to be washed new. We've been able to uh, pray through that situation, to uh, praise God through that situation, to carry on and do what we would normally do on a day-to-day -day basis, but trusting God in that situation, right? That is the only way that we can restore our strength. Placing us on a firm foundation is big. A firm foundation, I'm thinking it, a house, a building, right? Um, if God is going to build me up out of what I went through to place me up, up there so that I can't fall, so that it doesn't break, then well, he's mighty, right? Yes. I know that's right. So, um, Overall, you know, suffering is the last word we want to hear. Anybody wants to hear, especially Christians, because, again, when I thought that, you know, I follow Christ, why am I going through? I don't want to hear about suffering. We don't want to hear how it's going to make us stronger. Hey, ultimately, we don't want to hear what's good for us. And God is good for us. But how many people don't want to hear about it? I mean, if people think it's too much. Hmm. And of course, if we had our way, there would be no suffering. It wouldn't be no adversities. But remember, God never promised us that we wouldn't suffer. <laughs> he never promised us that he wouldn't so that we wouldn't suffer. If you read the Bible, uh, you know, as you continue to read as well. He promises the opposite, especially in the, the Old Testament, because he's using so many people in the Bible as examples of um, people who suffer, men, men and women who suffered before they got to see the glory of the Lord. So, you know, what does he say? Let's just let me go back to. Uh, I'm thinking about Job. I read the book of Job. That's a good one. Um, Job thought that he wasn't worthy enough. He thought that, you know, my life is over. God has turned on me. Nothing is going to come. Um, you know, all these things. And then he started to talk about all the good things that he's done and why is God still punishing him after he's been so faithful? Well, because adversities come. They happen so that we can be built up stronger. They took Job, uh, they took, they killed his children. Like it was big. They, they took all his livestock, all his work and all that. It was, it was a big story. So I encourage you to read the book of Job. Hey boss lady, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Moses was used in the beginning uh, by God to bring the people out of, uh, out of Pharaoh's care. Uh, who else? There's so many. Um, even Cain, Cain and Abel was being used. Like, why did one brother kill the other, but then the other brother came out to be, uh, you know, so much, so much bigger. Hmm. Ruth was being used. Ruth had to show her, uh, what was it, her faithfulness to God before he would bless her with the child. There's so many more. And like Mr. Terry says, a lot of times that uh, there's, I can't remember the specifics, but there's so many books in the Bible, but majority of those books were written by people who were being used. They were murderers. They were uh, thieves. They were all these things, they, they, uh, they turned on God. They turned on Jesus himself. So if those people are being able to be used, then why are we exempt? Why do we think that we're exempt? Why do we think we have it so much better? Amen. Learn to worship the blesser, not the blessing. That's the book of Job. Amen. Job was like, you know, I've done this. I've done that. I've gotten this. I've gotten that. God said, none of that is anything. That's just material. So 
you know, all these things are going to work together for us. All the things are going to work together for our good, whether we realize it or not. We're going to struggle. We're going to endure. We're going to be strong. So, if we go ahead into the second part of this live. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. James 1, 2 through 4. And I'm just putting that there as a timestamp, not only for you, if you want to go back and read, take notes, um, you know, read the whole chapter, or if you, uh, you know, just as a timestamp for myself as well, so I can come back and put the verses in the description later. So James 1, 2 through 4 reads, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Amen. This word is already blessed by God. I just thank you, God. I thank Jesus right now because this word is so powerful. Hallelujah. It's powerful. Okay. Whew. So when troubles come my way, how as a Christian, right? I don't think I'm supposed to have any troubles. I think that God's supposed to have it all together. And I, and every day is supposed to be a breeze, right? No, that ain't right. We have to endure just like everybody else. We are no better than anyone else just because we're Christians and just because we follow God. We're all the same. The only difference is we know, uh, you know, we know who has our life in their hands. Come on now. We know that we can be happy and content and joyful no matter what we're faced with. For that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Again, we're just being made stronger. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And do we know that we're being made stronger? Or do we just, just think about, um, you know, the fact that we don't fit in with the crowd anymore? Or the fact that nobody wants to hang out with us anymore? Or, or whatever it might be. You know, because we got a friend. We got a friend in Jesus who's bigger than all that. No one wants to rejoice in struggles. But we have to. We have to praise, literally praise through whatever uh, the circumstance is that might have us a little shook up because it will not break us. Uh, why wouldn't you praise? Why wouldn't you worship knowing that God is, is doing this to build you up? How much stronger are you going to be? Just like we talked about yesterday, the holy boldness. Holy boldness. Just just maneuvering in such a way that you know that God is not going to give you more than you can bear. And he's better than anything or anyone I've ever encountered. Thank you, Jesus. I'm thinking about, huh, let me talk about myself for a minute. Let's be transparent. I got a couple stories to tell real quick. Uh, one was a while ago, I'm thinking about, you know, for back in November. Hey, Miss B, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Back in November 2022, I lost my sister. And I had took care of my sister for four years. And besides that, she was my sister, right? So, uh, you know, she was disabled and everything. So she couldn't walk and talk and such. But we had such a relationship that I knew what she wanted. I knew what she needed. I knew that, you know... She might uh, just want me to to give her Eskimo kisses. You know, I knew that she just wanted to be in my presence. So, you know, as I as I was taking care of her, I wasn't close to God like I am now. And I could say that, you know, I, I gave her my undivided attention. But on those times when sometimes she would just cry and I couldn't get her to stop crying, I didn't know why. I do know that I used to just pray and I didn't know if there was a white or right way to pray or not, but I just knew that I was praying. So then what would happen was, you know, eventually she would calm down and, you know, I was able to, to go back and, and try to do it again. And, and then at, at this time, she's 
she might be a little happier than she was before. And, you know, all this time when I was taking care of my, my disabled sister, I could just think about the fact that, man, that could be me. You know, just to think that we wake up every day with, with breath in our body, activity in our limbs and, and not needing anybody to take care of us. It's just, it's big, right? So then when God called her on home, I didn't understand why. First thing that went through my head was, oh no, I'm going to lose my income, right? Oh no, my sister has passed away and, you know, I'm left with my dad who I don't really get along with, but we're here, right? Whoever knew that within a couple months that I would be giving God honor and glory and praise for uh, putting me through something that, that hurt so bad, right? So unexpectedly. And that really made my life shift and changed my whole routine and changed my aspect on life. Cause I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Nobody needs me. My kids are older, right? Even though they weren't older, right? I was just letting the devil get into my brain, but just as simple as taking somebody that I love so wholeheartedly and taking them away from this earth and, and knowing that, you know, she's so much better that you know, she had to endure whatever she went through in order to transition to be in the, at that heavenly banquet forever. And I had to endure whatever I had to endure to transition to being without her. And then all I could do was cry. All I could do was cry, of course, because I've lost my sister. But I, also all I could do was pray. Not only pray, but praise God. Just knowing that, you know, she was she had no sin. She had no sin. And she was completely disabled. But when you die, you get that new body in Christ. And just knowing that she has that new body in Christ and, and she's still, you know. But how do we endure? How do we push through something like that on somebody that you've taken care of for so long just ups and leaves this world? How can you trust God? How can you say God did that and it's okay and I trust it? Because now, let me just say that there's a lot of changes happening in my life and they're good things. They're real good things. I'll be able to tell you about it soon, you know, uh, but to endure, it's hard. It hurts. Hey, 755. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you. So my second story was maybe a month or so ago, I got up super early, I went to the gas station, 7-Eleven. I got some coffee, got some donuts. Well, Nene was with me, right? Well, normally she's not even up this early, but she was with me. We went and got some breakfast and I left my phone, right? And I didn't even realize I left my phone until I got home. So I'm over here like, oh no, I left my phone. So I'm calling 7-Eleven, um, driving around the corner, asking the lady, have you seen my phone? Da -da -da, right? No, nobody's seen my phone. They all think I'm crazy. All right. So then I'm thinking about the fact that... <clears throat> I'm going to have to make, uh, I'm, I'm making some changes, right, in my life. So I'm waiting on a call from a job. I'm waiting on, uh, I have an appointment, so I'm waiting on a verification call to come. There's so many important things. Not only that, it's my phone, right? We think our phone is pretty important. Hey, uh, Eric B., good morning. Thanks for coming in. We think our phone's important. I'm over here freaking out, right? Well, what I would normally do, I probably would be, cussing and fussing and, and, you know, doing all this other stuff because I'm blaming everybody but myself for me leaving my phone somewhere. But this time, this time knowing that this is a test, knowing that God brings us to stuff just to see if we're going to, uh, to make it out on the other side, if we're going to endure, right? Are we going to continue to pray and push and, and, give him praise and, and honor through that thing? Or are we going to fold? Are we going to call out to God in anger as Job did? Are we going to uh, blame somebody else? No. So what happened was, long story short, uh, my daughter is over here like, mom, that's your phone. You're acting like it's not a big deal. We got to find it, right? My husband is over here like, oh my God, how do you leave your phone? We're going to have to replace that, right? <laughs> so, and, and, and through all this, I'm like, y'all, it's okay. 
like, don't worry about that. Like I say, God is good to his people, right? He's going to bring my phone back to me if, if, if it's for me to have, right? Maybe I lost it for a reason. Maybe I needed to start fresh. Maybe I didn't need to be in contact with, with people who was in my phone. I don't know. I had all these things going through my mind, but all I kept saying was, no, God did this. No, there's a reason for this. No, it's okay, y'all. Like they were flipping out, okay? So it had to be maybe two or three hours and I just put on some praise music. I started cleaning. I started worshiping and I'm just like, I'm crying. I'm like, Jesus, it, you know, there's a reason. There's a reason why you did this. Long story short, something told me to call this 7-Eleven again. So I did. The lady said, you know what? Your phone is right here. It was in my pocket the whole time. I said, what? It was in my pocket the whole time. See, I could have folded. I could have flipped out. I could have went off on my family, right? I could have been mad at them for freaking out, <laughs> for for not trusting God in there, right? But I can't, I can't make them do such, right? I can only be the example. I can only show them. And they don't want to listen, then I got to, you know, wipe the dust off my feet and keep going. But that's just a perfect example that not only, you know, not because it's a phone, it's a possession, it's a material thing, but because what do we do when we wait, when we are unsure, when we are feeling like there's no hope left and all that, we call out the name of Jesus. We praise him. We just be thankful just to be alive, not for losing that material thing. So I just thank God for that. I feel, feel like I can breathe. I feel released. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We have to recognize it. When we see it, we have to recognize him. We have to stop immediately and call out to him. Hallelujah. I just thank you. I, he woke me up this morning because this my little one here. She don't want to go to sleep till like midnight for some reason. I, I was up for a long time. But by the time uh, I, look, I woke up this morning, it was 555. And not only are those angel numbers, right, but it's like, 35 minutes before my life. So had I not woken up on time, I don't know what I would have done. And we say that our alarm, or we say that, not our alarm, but we say that our body is uh, set to wake up at a certain time. No, that's God. He is waking you up to get to it. He is helping you be consistent. He is setting you on a routine because he knows our life. He is strategic, right? He has placed... A plan for our life, and that is part of the plan. Get up early. So, you know, I'm just speaking to you as I speak to me. If God wakes you up at four o'clock in the morning and you don't got to be up till six, I suggest get up because there's a reason that He wants you to be up that early. And if you sleep in, you could miss the opportunity for whatever it is. Steve says, whatever adversities we're going to come up against, God is right there to give us a way of escape. Amen. He always gives us escape. But are we going to trust it? Are we going to wait on him? Waiting is hard, I tell you. But when you know that God is going to get the glory out of that, <laughs> you wait as long as it takes. It will always make you stronger. It's always going to make your life 10 times better because you feel peaceful, you feel content, you feel that joy in God, through Christ, only through Christ. So, uh, literally, like, God is moving right now. He's bringing me out of some things that I never would have thought I'd see the, the light of day from. And I'm going to share with y'all soon. I'm going to share soon. So just stick around. I thank you so much for coming in. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Let's go over and see what Frugal Mama got going on. And I'll see you back here later today for the reading of God's Word. We're in the book of Revelations right now. It's getting good. It's getting good. Amen. Please listen to the gospel song I love to call on the name of Jesus. Yeah, I know that's right. Great songs, beautiful songs. I love to go into praise and worship right after my live, if not even before, if I wake up early enough, you know. 
because it just sets the tone for the day. Hallelujah, anyhow. I know that's right. That's a great song. <laughs> yes. All right, y'all. Have a good rest of your day. I love you, and I will see you soon. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.